I hope y'all are ready for the WNBA draft. It all goes down Monday, April 15th in Brooklyn. New York native and Ohio State Buckeyes guard Celeste Taylor is one of 15 players invited to attend the draft, but she's one of one to be invited in the studio to come kick it with your boy. Ah, uh, you're back in New York. How does it feel to be uh, back home? Uh, it feels amazing just to um, see family, see friends, and just bring it back all where it started. All right, let's talk about the WNBA draft, your career, just anything and everything, Celeste Taylor. You're one of 15 players, like I said, to be invited to the draft. That's a huge deal. What do you think your emotions are going to be like before you hear your name called versus after? Yeah, I mean, before, um, it's very anxious, um, but also exciting, just trying to enjoy the process and just stay locked in and, and just keep fighting for, you know, whatever whatever comes my way, yep. be ready for it. Um, and then after, obviously, a little sense of relief, but at the same time, knowing that it's time to put my head down and work when we get to training camp. What's that process been like? Because I know in the NFL, there's like the combine, there's pro days. Like when your season finished up, what did you have to do to prepare for the WNBA and also just work out in front of scouts? What's that process like for you? Yeah, so for the WNBA, you don't um, get to really work out in front of um, the coaches or scouts. Okay. Really, um, it's Usually during the season, they get to come watch you play. I know if you happen to be in a city and they want to watch you work out with a trainer or something, they can do that as well. Um, but for me, we, we kind of had a tough loss to end the season, so kind of giving myself a week to, to really grasp that and, and understand it was my last college game. Mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, just trying to go through the process, speaking to cer certain teams and speaking to teams about what, you know, they're looking for, uh, what can I improve on, what can I work on in the next couple weeks before training camp. So it's been, it's been a pretty fun process, but definitely my first. <laughs> did you cry after that last game? I did. I did yeah, cry. Yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> it's, it's okay to let it out, you know. That's just one of those moments. Yeah. Like, after my last game in college, I let it all out. They was yeah. looking at me like Caleb Williams crying to his mama. Like, they were looking at me like I'm crazy. But uh, <laughs> is there any team that you prefer to play for and, and why? Yeah, I wouldn't say necessarily is a specific team that yeah. I want to play for, um, but at the same time, uh, the WNBA is really different in that, you know, we only have 144 spots, and, you know, it's, it's really where you get drafted. So I think, um, you know, I'm just looking forward to going to a team that, you know, is interested um, and really wants me. Um, and just knowing that, you know, I'm, they're going to get a kid that's going to work hard and get after it and compete. Yeah, when they draft you, they want you. I was an undrafted free agent with the Giants 2007, my rookie year. So, you know, you look at the people who get drafted, you're, you're, you're one of the few and on. You've put in so much work. And, and this leads us into the next question because I'm like, you're from New York. And what would you tell your young self when you first picked up a basketball if you could tell your young self that you would be in Brooklyn the day you get drafted to play and continue the game you love? Yeah, I mean, first and foremost, you know, I, I don't think, you know, I really thought that that was something that was in, you know, reality, honestly. Like, I didn't, it was kind of far-fetched um, just because, you know, nobody in my family, you know, has ever done something like really? that. And so... Um, it was just, you know, kind of, kind of cool um, once I really got to that realization that, you know, it's something that's really in my future um, and can happen. But, I mean, the one thing I would definitely tell myself is that you're going to get people that are going to tell you you can't do it. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to get, you know, places that or universities that won't like you. Um, but I think that always staying true to myself and genuine and keeping my head down and working um, is something that, you know, I would tell my younger self just to keep doing what you're doing because things are going to happen. You get 99 no's before you get the one yes. Um, and that kind of leads into your story. When I wa read your one sheet, very impressive story. You've gone through the journey. I'm a firm believer in the phrase, let the pursuit be the reward. Uh, how has your journey turned you or molded you into Celeste Taylor, the hooper, and Celeste Taylor, the person? Yeah, I mean, I give a lot of credit to that. You know, I give a lot of credit to my journey um, and definitely having patience in that journey because, you know, it can get really hard at mm -hmm. times. But, um, I mean, the journey, I started off at Texas, and I loved the university, um, had a coaching change in my sophomore year, mm -hmm. tried it out, um, stayed, was able to play during COVID in the bubble, um, get to experience that, playing in Elite Eight, um, transferred to Duke University, um, a really, really amazing institution, um, great people. It was my coach's first year getting to learn under her. She came from the NBA, so definitely a great experience in that aspect. And then, you know, the final stop, you know, I think it was something that I needed to just continue to grow me as that person, like you said, 
Um, it helped me come to a lot of different realizations about myself um, and just the things that I'm capable of doing. When it comes to the transfer portal, I'm one of those boomers who are like, no, nah, you know, instead of transferring, you need to sit your butt there and you need to work hard and beat that player out. The time, the game's different. Mm -hmm. College sports is absolutely different now. So what are your thoughts on the current, current climate of the transfer portal and NIL deals? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely amazing. I, I'll speak specifically in my case. I mean, um, everybody's case is different. But for me, um, obviously, I had a new coach. Yeah. Um, it just wasn't the right spot for me. COVID happened at that time, too. My parents weren't able to come down. I was in Texas. That's not a driving distance. Um, so finding somewhere I could go a little bit closer to home, you know, it kind of it led me to Duke, a great academic institution. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was able to get my psychology degree from there. Um, so then, you know, after that, you know, my... One of my assistant coaches left again, another coaching change for me um, that I was very comfortable with. Um, and so I decided to go to Ohio State. But I think the, the transfer portal is good overall. You know, I've definitely benefited from it. There's a lot of people that have benefited from it. Um, I never went into the process thinking that I wanted to transfer. You know, I was kind of yeah, in that yeah. same mindset of, you know, like, I'm going to stick it out. But for me, it wasn't about beating out a player. Um, it wasn't about playing time. Um, it was just a lot of it had to do with me mentally. Um, and also me, you know, how, how far I wanted to take this, this thing of basketball, this professional um, sport that I can, you know, obviously have as a career. Um, but, you know, NIL has been big, too. Um, you know, it's definitely something that has helped out a lot of uh, athletes. Um, everybody has a different take on it, just like the transfer portal. Yep. Um, but I definitely think it's cool for people to get their names out there. It's a way to get their, your name across. Um, but, yeah, it's been great. So if you look at your journey then, I mean, your sports journey really helped you grow as a person because here's this kid from Queens, goes down to Texas. Yeah. Completely different world down there if anyone's lived down in Texas. And then you get to go to a place, an uh, institution like Duke. Higher learning, you're around people who are very successful, don't, probably don't think or act the way like the people who you grew up with or just the community you grew up with. And then you get that moment to where, all right, here, I'm at Ohio State. I'm playing. This is where I'm playing. This is where I'm going to end up. And this is how I kind of, how my future is going to go by the way I play here. So it kind of helps round you out yeah. in a way. And we don't see that a lot when it comes to some of these kids in the portal because they want to go because they're not getting the, uh, the playing time. So thank you for clearing that up. <laughs> I had my little OK Boomer moment. <laughs> now we can move on to the next question. Uh, you're at Ohio State. You get to play against Caitlin Clark. That's a whole Caitlin Clark mania. Uh, you played at Iowa. You got a chance to be there and in, in, in play in front of that crowd. What's it like? Like, what's it like playing against Caitlin Clark? <laughs> yeah, she's, she's a phenomenal um, athlete. Um, she's definitely has grown the game in so many ways, you know. Like, there's, you look around and you, you see girls wearing her, her, her jersey, um, wearing her name on the back, and, you know, just supporting her. You see the fan base that she brings around and everybody that she brings around with her. Um, and so I just think it's great. You know, I got the opportunity to play with her um, mm. a couple years ago. We were younger at the time. But, um, I mean, yeah, she's, she's grown tremendously. Um, she's doing great things for the sport. And, you know, I'm so excited to see her um, in the league and see what she can do there. Um, but she's definitely a great player and de definitely has helped grow the women's game. So, I mean, playing there, playing as one of her reg for last regular season games oh, at yeah, home. Oh, right. that's um, right. So it's the first time that a lot of people could come out to see her. The last time people could come out to see her, um, we, we took the loss there. But, I mean, just the environment. Just to be able to play in environments like that, um, I think it's just amazing for everybody because, you know, at the end of the day, that can be somebody's first time watching you play too. So I think that's just important um, that what she's doing for the sport. You talk about seeing kids wearing her jersey. What was that first feeling when you saw someone wearing your jersey for the first time? Another cry emoji moment? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was definitely really cool. I mean, honestly, I think as I get older, I start to, you know, realize how much of an impact I yeah. can leave on the younger generation. Um, but, you know, obviously for the first time, it was, it was definitely really crazy. <laughs> Damn, she's saying younger generation. Like, I'm feeling old as I don't know what. You are the younger generation. <laughs> All right, so uh, that coverage that women's college basketball got this year was absolutely phenomenal. I believe more people tuned in to the women's championship than they did the men's. You think that coverage is going to carry over to the WNBA, especially with your class being rookies in the WNBA this year? Yeah, I for sure think it will carry over. You know, obviously college is a big business in itself when it comes to college athletics, but, you know, when people start investing in the WNBA and investing in the women on the team, um, you can see how much they give back tenfold. Yep. 
I mean, you know, you, you see it in Caitlin Clark in the college game, but I think, you know, she's bringing all those fans that she had with her there to the WNBA. So, you know, it's only going to help, you know, more players in the WNBA. They're going to have new fans. They're going to have people that are going to be wearing their jerseys as well just because, you know, one person is watching another player doesn't mean that you, you can't get the, the shine too or, you know, get looked at too. People are watching everything. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I think, I think it will carry over. Um, and I think it's going to be an exciting, you know, journey for the WNBA to continue to grow. Is there a player in the WNBA that you're looking forward to playing with and a player that you're looking forward to going up against? Yeah. You're smiling. Oh. Right, yeah, there we go. Let's get juicy on this one. I mean, I, I have some friends in the league now who, you know, I would be excited to either play with or even play against, um, you know. Like who? Uh, Jordan Horston, okay. Zaya Cook. Um, you know, we, we've been friends for a couple years now. So just to see them, you know, after their rookie year last year to, to come out and do big things, it'll be pretty cool to play with them or against them. And then, I mean, obviously, any of the vets, any of the people that I've been looking up to my whole life um, from going to Liberty Games to to seeing uh, Stewie play at, with the Liberty now and being a hometown kid. Um, yeah, I mean, all of it is exciting, but just being able to k keep wide-eyed, open-eared, and, you know, being able to learn from everyone around me. Between you, Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese, you all left the college, the women's college game in a better place. Are there some players that are still, you know, in college that you're looking forward to watching not only grow personally, but grow the game and bring more eyes and ears to the sport as well? Yeah, I mean, there's there's a whole bunch. I mean, there's, you know, I, my girl Paige at UConn, yeah. um, you know, AZ's over there too. Um, you know, I have I have a lot of, you know, friends that they're still in college. Um, but, you know, I'm just excited to see what everybody can do. I mean, you know, I, you know, obviously um, have gotten, you know, a lot more recognition throughout the years, but, you know, hasn't been on a level like Caitlin Clark or Angel Reese. But to me, I mean, it's just it's just fun to be a part of it. You know, it's fun to say that, you know, I had the opportunity to go to three great institutions yep. and play um, to get my degree. Um, and so I think that, you know, there's a lot of young talent out there. Um, and I think that if people keep investing like they have been um, and going to games and, you know, taking their kids there that you know, those kids can get seen, too, and bring some limelight to, to Let's women. Let's talk about your Colombian roots. Uh, we're in the era of representation, so how have you added some Colombian flavor not only to your game but to your style and in the locker room as, as well because I don't think there's many Colombians in uh, Columbus, Ohio, so uh, how'd you bring that flavor to Columbus? Yeah, I mean, I mean for me, I think the big thing is just um, – one, the way I carry myself um, and, you know, the things that I value. I think a lot of that stemmed from my Spanish roots. Um, and so just having family be something that's so important to me um, and whoever I, you know, bring into my family and have meet my family, like they automatically become family, too. Um, and just making sure that those people feel that, you know, and feel that they can be comfortable whenever they're around me and my family um, because they are family to us. Um, and I think uh, also I, I love to cook. So, you know, I try to um, the the recipes that have been passed down to me from my grandma, um, try to cook them for my friends um, and, you know, just have them, you know, get a little taste of it. And then sometimes, you know, like obviously people don't realize at first that I'm Spanish or I'm that, that I'm Colombian. So, you know, maybe I'll throw out a, a few Spanish words here and there <laughs> um, and just get, you know, a laugh out of people. But um, yeah. First reaction from your teammates when you busted out a packet of Sasson. <laughs> I mean, I have a lot of teammates who, um, when they do cook, they use a lot of okay, seasoning. Okay, okay. So it was nothing sure. crazy to them. Sure. It was nothing crazy. <laughs> uh, uh, are you going? Are you looking to have a like a Colombian themed draft day outfit like the Patriots Christian Gonzalez had last year when he was drafted? Can you give us <laughs> some sort of little exclusive or look into what uh, Celeste Taylor's <laughs> draft day outfit is going to look like? Yeah, I think it, it's just you know, it's me. Um, I think that you know. It's, very um, simple and elegant, um, but cute at the same time, and allowing, you know, my per my personality to shine through whatever it is that I wear. Um, but I mean, nothing specifically um, about me for real. It's me by Celeste Taylor. <laughs> Sounds like a fragrance. Right? You should, should look into that. You should look into that. I just want my ten percent. All right, uh, really quick, rapid fire questions just to have fun with. You're from Queens, uh, Mets or Yankees? Yankees. From Queens? Yeah. I oh, know. wow. They may not let you back in the borough after that one. Jets or Giants? Jets. Knicks or Nets? Knicks. Which Colombian dish did you cook for your college teammates that they loved most? A bandeja paisa. Can you break that down for us? You know, huh? <laughs> it's just um, steak, 
uh, plantains, Ooh. white rice, beans, avocado, fried S eggs. Sweet plantains or the yeah. tostones? No, sweet plantains. Okay, yeah, I yeah. love those too. All right, <laughs> last but not least, what does L-M-G-A-B-E-A-C-O-A-R stand for? It's in prompter. L-M-G, let me, no. You're, the let oh. me is right. Let me get a bacon, egg, and cheese on a roll. Let's go! She's so <laughs> She went to Austin, to Raleigh, Durham, and Columbus, but she still has that Queens flavor. Uh, the WNBA draft goes down Monday, April 15th. Thank you for that. Oh, that was awesome. Thank, <laughs> thank you. Uh, good luck for, with everything, and uh, we'd love to have you back in studio, oh, especially you. if you uh, get drafted by Brooklyn. But uh, regardless, this was awesome, and we wish you nothing but the best. Thank you.